Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you all. Let's can we give the Lord some thanks this morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Yes, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. He's worthy. Praise God. Amen. 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 We thank God for you today. Praise God. We thank God for this privilege, this opportunity to come together once again. Amen. On this platform, praise God to, amen, just, amen, delve into the word of God and allow the Lord to speak to our hearts and to our minds. Amen. On today, praise God. Amen. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Praise God. Amen. So we're going to begin, praise God, with a word of prayer. Praise God. Amen. So we ask that you bow your heads and lift our hearts to the Lord. Father, we thank you today, O oh Lord, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for even allowing us this privilege, Lord, to come together on this platform on this morning, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you would bless, that you would strengthen, Lord God, each home, each family, Lord God, as only you can. We even thank you, even, oh God, hallelujah, how you kept us all throughout this week, Lord. And we thank you, Lord God, for our expectation, oh God, hallelujah, that coming and in, going into this week, you're going to keep us, oh God, and protect us, and you're going to lead us, and you're going to guide us. Oh Lord, I pray, Lord God, that we would embrace your word, Lord God, with the idea and the purpose, oh God, of obeying your word, Lord God. Hallelujah. Allow us, oh God, to truly hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against thee, oh God. Lord, we thank you. And even I pray, Lord God, if there are any that are sick among us, that you would touch, that you would heal, and that you would deliver, Lord God, that you would loose and that you would set free. Most of all, Father, that you would fill with your precious Holy Ghost. In Jesus, your precious name, we pray. Let us all say amen and amen. amen. Praise amen. God. Hallelujah. God bless amen. you. Amen. Praise God. In the name amen. of the Lord. Um, today, we're, we're yet in uh, Colossians chapter 3. Amen. Praise God. Our attempt, or our aim today, amen, praise the Lord, is to move into verse, begin in verse, amen, praise God, um, 18. But again, um, this section uh, from 18, verse 18, through the first verse of chapter four, amen, sort of deals with social relations, praise God. This pap passage, it emphasizes, again, mutual privileges and responsibilities, amen, praise God, among families and others, family members and others, praise God. And um, as we said, stated, amen, in our last um class and then the pagan society of paul's day defined these relationships pretty much in a one-sided uh, manner giving all power and authority uh to one of the parties but in colossians um it it, it presents them as sort of reciprocal mutual if you will uh all relationships are in the lord you know they are in the lord we read um uh, during our last class, uh, Colossians 3 and 18, uh, Colossians 20, 3 and 20, Colossians 3 and 23, and uh, chapter 4, verse 1, speaking to the fact that these are, amen, praise God, uh, in the Lord, uh, praise the Lord. And so, um, so again, um, this whole passage falls within the scope of Colossians 3.17, as I told you, amen, praise God, amen, uh, that becomes our memory verse uh, for this, this, this letter, amen, praise God, and whatever you do in word and in or deed, amen, praise God, we do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him, praise God, amen, and so, what that does, amen, praise God, it establishes, uh, again, the lordship of Jesus over all 
areas of our life. And this is one of the things, amen, praise God, that we want to make clear is that, amen, when we take on Christ, praise God, we don't take on him, amen, praise God, in a section of our life or a subset of our life, amen, praise God, but he is, or he becomes what? Our life, praise God, in every area, every aspect, amen, praise God, of our life. You want to say it like this, every nook and cor corner, cranny, amen, praise God, every corner, amen, praise God, whatever it may be, Amen, praise God. It falls under, amen, his lordship. So, amen, praise God. And, and the reality of it is, praise God, it is with that attitude and with that frame of mind, praise God, that this is how we will navigate, amen, through this life. Amen, praise God. All of our activity, all of what we say, amen, praise God, we do it. Amen. Praise the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. With the idea again, amen. Praise God of, 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 of looking to him, amen, for guidance, looking to him, amen, for approval, looking to him, amen, praise God, or doing those things, amen, those activities, praise God, those, amen, what we say and do, amen, in a fashion that is acceptable, praise God, unto him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 18, amen, says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as is fit, or that is proper, amen, in the Lord. Uh, verse 18 tells wives to submit uh, or to be subject to their own husbands. Uh, in other words, wives should acknowledge the leadership, amen, excuse me, the leadership role of the, of the husband in the family. Uh, Ephesians chapter five, verse 22 through 24 says, wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Titus chapter two, verses four and five, that they may be teach, that they may teach the young women to be sober and to love their husbands, to be to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. This attitude, again, is proper or fitting, if you will, in the Lord. Uh, the clause here is descriptive, but it, it is also can be seen as restrictive. Uh, the husband has the authority to lead only to the extent that is proper in the Lord. Let me say that again. The husband has the authority to lead only to the extent that it is proper in the Lord. The wife is not inferior uh, to the husband, nor is she his slave. The Bible presents marriage as a partnership between two people of equal value, worth, and rights who fulfill distinct but complementary roles. Genesis, amen, uh, excuse me, Genesis 2 and 18. And the Lord God said, and it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Uh, that 24th verse, therefore shall a man leave his father and mo his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 11 and 12. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither uh, the woman without the man in the Lord, as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. First Peter three and seven, likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to the knowledge given honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered, praise God. So this verse, uh, verse 18, 
does not say that women in general should submit to men in general, or that a woman must submit to all men, praise God. Rather, it speaks specifically of the marriage relationship and tells a woman to submit to her own husband. Y'all hear that? Amen. Yeah. Right. Okay. Amen. Yeah. All right. So now I know, mm -hmm. or we know, in a world sensitized by, you know, where we are now in terms of uh, uh, what we call um, uh, the subject of equality and things of this nature, the word submit may seem archaic to some. Praise God. And I do. Uh, quite a bit of premarital counseling and we get to this part uh, you get some sometimes you get some re resistance praise God all right okay uh, but understood in the biblical sense there is nothing offensive about it okay and we must not lose the truth it expresses okay it does not allow a husband to abuse his wife in any way, make arbitrary decisions based on his wishes alone, make selfish demands upon her, or treat her as inferior to himself, okay? Instead, he must love his wife, give honor to her, and seek to please and benefit her as much as he would himself. Uh, Ephesians mm -hmm. chapter five, uh, beginning at verse 25 through 33, husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. Okay, so husbands, Christ is our example, praise God, and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man yet, ever, yet hateth his so no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the mm -hmm. Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and why and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Praise God. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 19, husbands love your wives, be not bitter against them. And again, uh, 1 Peter 3 and 7, once again, likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to, the, to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Praise God. So submission, amen, here in, our, in the context of our lesson, simply means deferring to the husband's final authority. Uh, in any unit, one person must have ultimate responsibility and authority, and God chose, in this case, the man to fulfill this role. Major decisions in a marriage should be made on a cooperative, mutually agreeable basis. But, but in situations okay. where someone someone must assume final authority and responsibility, the husband should do so. He should be, he should be the spiritual leader. He should Amen. bear the primary burden of providing for the necessities of the family. First Timothy five and eight. But if Amen. any provide not for his own 
and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. What is an infidel? An unbeliever. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So if we don't provide, amen, praise God for our families, husbands, praise God. Amen. Then as Paul, amen, states here, once again in 1 Timothy 5 and 8, again, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he have denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So God places heavy responsibilities upon the husband and gives him a corresponding authority, amen, to fulfill his obligations in a very real sense. Husbands and wives are to submit to each other. Ephesians 5.21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Praise God. The husband must sacrifice himself for his wife. Husbands, Ephesians 5 and 25, husbands love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Praise God. Amen. Y'all see that? Now, I don't know how many husbands I have on the line today. Praise God. But y'all see that? Husbands. Amen. Amen. I heard you, Jason. <laughs> I see it, Bishop. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, brothers. Husbands must sacrifice himself for his wife. I don't see where it says the wife has to sacrifice herself for, her, for the husband, but it, but it does say. Amen. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Praise God. Amen. He must recognize that she is she has power rights or authority over his body even as he does over her body praise god first corinthians chapter 7 verse 4 the wife have not power that is authority over her own body but the husband and likewise also the husband have not power that is authority over his own body but the wife praise god amen you all see that amen all right, praise the Lord. So don't tell your wife you're going on a 30-day fast, praise God, without getting her permission. Y'all hear me? Amen. <laughs> you're married. You're not single. Amen. All right, praise God. Amen. All right, praise the Lord. Okay. Like all believers, they must give preference Amen to one another in honor and bear with one another in love. Okay, Romans chapter 12, verse 10, be kindly affection, that is to cherish one to the other, another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Ephesians chapter four, verse two, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another, how? In love. Praise God. Amen. Now, there is something I want to read to you. Amen. Praise God. This is um, by another theologian that wrote this. And I think it, it it's the, his comments are, would be, are, should be helpful in explaining the true meaning of the wife's submission to her husband. All right. So bear with me. Okay, so in such submission, there is nothing humiliating or degrading. It is not inconsistent with intellectual or moral and moral and spiritual equality. It is merely the recognition of an authority which is essential to social and domestic order and welfare. It is the natural expression of love which manifests itself in willing service and finds joy in giving pleasure. 
nor is this subjection unlimited, nor is this subjection unlimited. In other words, obviously a wife must not submit when obedience requires an action contrary to conscience or conduct at variance with the express will of God. We don't cross that line, praise God, amen? Love makes tyranny and unkindness, selfishness and cruelty absolutely impossible. That's what love does. It removes from the submission, it removes from the submission expected of a wife all that is distasteful or difficult. Indeed, it places a husband in a position of actual subjection, for he is compelled by love to obey every claim the wife may make for support, for sympathy, for protection, for happiness. All right. Y'all get that? Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. All right, so verse 19, amen, tells the husbands to love their wives. Similarly, uh, Titus 2 and 4, praise God, amen, tells wives to love their husbands. We read that earlier, but then again, uh, here again, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, all right? All right, so... This, excuse me, <coughs> verb here, uh, um, uh, love here, which refers to uh, the, the deepest, truest love, and is usually used in scripture for, amen, the believer's love. True love is not mere affection. But it is strong, but it is a strong concern for a person's whole welfare. Praise God. Not just one aspect of them, praise God, but their whole welfare. Husbands are to love their wives sacrificially and to love them as they love, <coughs> excuse me, their own bodies. Here again, we read from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 through 33. Amen. We won't read it again, praise God, but that is the direct reference to what we're just, uh, what we're saying, amen, right uh, here. Husbands <coughs> are commanded not to be bitter or harsh toward their wives. As discussed in the commentary, which I just read, praise God, husbands must submit to their wives is in many ways. The command for husbands is to love their wives means that they have no authority to abuse them, treat them selfishly, or disregard their desires. A husband must give honor to his wife, and if he mistreats her in any way, he will block his relationship with God. Amen. Likewise, 1 Peter 3 and 7, ye husbands, dwell with them according to the knowledge, giving honor to, unto the wife as the weaker vessel, praise God, amen. And this weaker vessel here is speaking primarily physically, amen, in terms of strength, praise God. And as physical strength, not, not mental and emotional strength, praise God, fortitude, but Thank you. That, um, amen, praise God, that physical strength. And as being heirs, what? Together, heirs together, not apart, but together of the grace of life, 
that your prayers huh, be not hindered. Amen. So if I don't treat my wife as Peter says here, amen, I don't think you want me praying for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I, I, you know, these thoughts go through my mind before you have a man of God pray for you. Amen. And if he's married, you might want to ask him questions. Are you treating your wife right? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Lay your hands on me. Praise God. Ask the wife, Bishop. Excuse me? Ask the wife. Is no. he, is oh, oh, oh ask the wife. Okay, gotcha. Or oh, is he treating you right? Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Minister. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We we you know we we kind of just a little, but this 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 is this is what the Lord requires of us, saints. Amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And 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 so, amen. We don't ever want to be in a position where our prayers are are hindered. Praise God. Indeed. And and honestly speaking, that, that speaks to all of us, whether male or female. We, we don't ever want to be in the place. If we're treating, if we're not treating our brothers or sisters, amen, praise God, whether it's husbands or wives, as we amen. should, guess what? Our prayers will be hindered. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And so we want to be in a place, amen, where we can do what? Get a prayer through. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And so, amen, let's keep that Amen. Praise God. Amen. In mind. Praise God. Amen. And so, you know, these are the things, amen, that we have to look at. Praise God. And we have to, amen, be considerate of. Praise the Lord. Amen. And when he talks about, you know, it is not, amen, good for man to be alone. This is what the Lord said. Amen. And, I, and, and the image is that of, amen, he's not complete. Amen. Without that wife, praise God. That that alone part looks at, amen, the image is one of uh, a branch, but not the whole tree. Praise God. Hallelujah. And when he brings in that help me, amen, praise God, it is that counterpart. It is that which completes, praise God. Amen. So when you look at this and you begin, even when we look at the fact that look at after man's first, amen, his, his first relationship is between him and his God, praise God. Then secondly, amen, praise God, he introduces that of the family, amen, the husband and the wife, praise God, amen? Praise the Lord, amen. Yeah. And when he says this and he makes this statement and I guess, amen, I'll take a little time, praise God. And he says, you know, he talks about what? Leaving and cleaving, amen? Y'all see that? All right. Genesis. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So when we when we see this, praise God, and we look at the fact, amen, and, and he says, praise God, in, in Genesis 2 and 24, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh, praise God. What happens in this marriage, amen, praise God, when a, amen, there is a new relationship that now takes precedent over that relationship between that man and his father and his mother, praise God. It is now the relationship with his wife, amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Where we see a lot of problems a lot of times, praise God, is when Amen. There is issues. There, there are circumstances where someone, something is able, amen, praise God, to get to come between that husband and that wife, praise God. Amen. And what, what we see here, amen, praise God, as he says here, and they shall be one flesh, speaking, amen, in terms of being united together, praise God. Amen. The other side of this is I, you know, used to hear people say, I'm a grown man, I'm a grown woman. You know, you, you, you can't change me. <laughs> but let, let me tell you, when you look at what he just said here, and the twain, the two shall become what? One flesh? Amen. My brother and my sister, guess what, you, what that is? That's change. Right. That's Amen. change. Amen. So Amen. if you don't want to change, and this is to all my single sisters, 
and, and, and brothers that are eligible for marriage, praise God, amen. If you don't want to change, <laughs> don't get married. Amen. Stay amen. single. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chief. Stay single. Praise right. the Lord. Amen. Paul talks about it in this sense, praise God. Amen. When one is married, they seek to please. The husband seeks to please the wife. The wife seeks to please the husband. Now he's talking, amen, praise God, as it relates to doing the work for the Lord, praise God. Amen. Because if he's married, then he, there ha he has to seek to please his wife. He has to see, the wife has to seek to please her husband, praise God. Amen. And so when we look at this, praise, praise the Lord. Amen. As we, again, we're saying, if, amen, uh, you, you, you view this or you see yourself as being, I am, I am who I am and I will not change, praise God, then mm. I, can, I counsel you, praise God, to stay single, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Marriage brings about change, praise God, amen. amen. And what we hope, amen, is a positive change, praise God, not something that is negative. When you add children to that equation, there's what? More change. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So we keep these things in mind. All right? Amen. See, it's more to it than just simply saying, well, he has the Holy Ghost and I have the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to do what? Navigate through all this. There's that honor. There's that respect. Praise God. There's that yes. love. Praise the Lord. All of these things are in play. Praise God. Amen. And so it's Amen. not just simply that, you know, again, you know, well, you know, you know, we, we, these are the activities, these are the actions that we have to be engaged in, just as we talked about, that's what we talked about, amen, even that, 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 that Colossians 3.17, it is in play here, whatever, and whatsoever we do, oh, word, no. what we say, or deed, what we do. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. We have to ask ourselves the question. Amen. Praise God. Is it acceptable unto the yeah. Lord? Praise God. Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's keep these things. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. In mind. Verse 20. Praise the Lord. Children. Obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Verse 20 tells children to obey their parents in all respects. Such obedience, amen, praise God, pleases the Lord. While children should always honor their parents, the duty of obedience is not absolute. There is no indication that adult children who have established their own home are still bound to follow their parents' desires. Praise God. Amen. So these are boundaries that we have to begin to recognize. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. All right. Praise God. As, as our children move into adulthood and they move out on their own, they establish their own households and things of this nature, we become more of what? That counsel. Amen. Praise God. You know, y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. 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 You, can't Amen. Run, you can't run your house and their house. Praise God. <laughs> it's just not going to work. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, if you're still living in your house, well, that's a whole Amen. other story. They can be 50 years old. Amen. But but if they're in your house, amen. Amen. Let me let me, let me stop right there. Praise God. Okay. Hallelujah. All right. So Thank you. Amen. So when we when we when we look at this, and again, you know, um these are the things, amen. Praise God. We 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 have to come, amen, to appreciate. Amen. And to understand, this is why it's so very important for each, each, uh, for our parents to instill the right values in your, in your children. Amen. While they are young and, and just keep just, 
you know, it, a lot of times I will, you know, we may say, we may not think they're list. They, 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 in my mind, they hear everything you say. They may not do That's everything right. you say, but they heard you. Trust me. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So just keep on saying, that. praise God. Put Amen. it in them. Amen. Praise God. So you can say, well, Lord, I did not hold back. Praise God. Amen. I share the whole counsel of God. Amen. Praise God. The things that they should do. Amen. With them, praise God. And this is one of the things, amen, that, you know, I, 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 I truly appreciate from the parenting that I, I received that I, I got a lot of instruction that helped me not just simply, you know, with my spiritual life, praise God, but even how to navigate through, you know, the workforce and my career and all of these things, praise God, amen. And I'm thankful for that. And, you know, what I see a lot of times, praise God, and, and I think sometimes the things that we take for granted that perhaps maybe we got, others may not have gotten, praise God. But I thank God, amen, praise God, for the instruction, praise the Lord, amen, that we we receive, praise God. Amen. Uh, Proverbs chapter one, and this for one of my uh, 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 classes that I used to run years ago, this was the this theme uh, scripture, uh, Proverbs chapter one. Um, and I believe verse eight, it says, my son, Hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Praise God. Amen. See, what we see here are both parents engaged in the teaching, the, the training, the, in the instructing of their child. Praise God. Amen. Uh, to give you maybe perhaps an example of how verse eight can play out on a, in a practical sense. Let's say this, let's say it like this, praise God. Uh, my son, hear the instruction of thy father, forsake not the law of thy mother. The father may tell the son, all right, son, I want this room cleaned up by the time I get home, okay? Now, the in forsake not the law of thy mother, it is the mother now telling the son how he's going to accomplish that, what he needs to get it to the point where it, 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 it makes, it gets the approval of his father. Y'all see what I just Amen. said? Amen. Praise God. That's them working in concert with one another. Praise God. Amen. And so, and this is, as, as parents, this is what we have to do. We have to work in concert with one another. One of the most confusing amen. things you can do, amen, is have one parent saying one thing and another parent saying another. And that oh, child amen. knowing if I want to do certain things, I'll go to this woman. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Ooh, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. Y'all know how we did it. Praise God. Amen. But when, mm -hmm. when, when, when bo both parents are working in concert with one another, oh, praise God, amen. Then one might ask the question, well, what did your mother say? Praise amen. God. Amen. Or she may say, your mother may say to you, what did, you, what did your father say? Amen. Oh, Thank you for God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> praise God. You know, these are the things... Amen. Praise God. Amen. And see, here's the other side of it. What are you doing? You're showing your child how a function, amen, the family should work. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. When, when, when a child sees a one-sided relationship in the marriage, amen, praise God, going on, amen, being lived out and unfolding before their eyes, Amen. Praise God. In some cases, this could be, amen, seen to them as this is the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And when you find out later that that's not the case, <laughs> amen. Oh, my Lord. Amen. amen. Praise amen. God. Hallelujah. And so we have to understand these things, saints. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
So a lot of what we do, a lot of what we say, praise God, amen, you, 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 you have to be aware of the fact that these are things that are potentially being instilled in your child, in your children. Amen. Praise God. We talk about it, praise God, amen, that, you know, um, when, you know, children, I mean, when they see you pray, praise God, then they know that, okay, this is what we do, praise God. But also, mm -hmm. it goes beyond just your pray, how you talk to one another, praise God. Yeah, how how, how the wife talks to the husband, how the husband talks to, speaks to the wife, praise God. Yeah. Amen. How the parent speaks to the children. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. We'll get to that in a minute, praise God, in, 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 in the next verse, I believe. But these are things, amen, praise God, that we need to understand. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. God created the family. Therefore, in my mind, he knew what he was doing. Amen. It wasn't a mistake. Praise God. Think about it. When, the, when, when a family is truly functioning as a family should function, praise God. Amen. Then what, what do you see? You see the love. You see the care. You see the concern. You see, amen, praise God, they're not there simply to get all I can get out of it at the expense of everybody else in the family. Praise God. Yes. Amen. But they care for one another. Amen. Yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. And when you look at it and, you know, you look at it in this sense and even during the times of, you know, the writing of, you know, uh, this text that we're going through and things of this nature, amen, praise God, there weren't necessarily any retirement plans and things of this nature. No social security, no, you know, 401ks or 403bs or pension programs and things of this nature. One of the things that they were also dependent on as they aged, praise God, amen, was that these children would be in a position, amen, to take care of them in their, amen, senior years, if you will, praise God, amen, amen. praise God. But you have to instill all of that in them. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Children, obey your parents in, the, in all things, for this is well-pleasing again unto the Lord. Again, so children have no duty to commit sinful acts, violate conscience, or disobey the express will of God at the behest of parents. And they should not do so if they have a choice in the matter, praise God, amen. So anything that crosses that line, praise God, amen, that child can respectfully refuse to do, praise God, amen. Mm -hmm. You know, those little innocent things, someone calls and somebody call, you know, says, tell them I'm not home. Uh-huh, uh -huh. amen. Yeah, yeah, yes, right. amen, praise God. And I'm so glad. That child said, mama said, you're not home. <laughs> no, not home, praise God. Daddy said, tell you he ain't home. Praise God. No. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. See, look at, the, look at what we're teaching our children. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. The general principle. Is the, is the same thing that we read in Acts chapter 5 in verse 29, and it applies here, praise God, as well. We ought to obey God rather than men. That's the general principle, amen, that guides us in things, navigating through things such as this, praise God. If it goes against, amen, the word of God, then guess what? We uh -huh. ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the name of our God. Thank you, Lord. Verse 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Verse 21 tells the parents not to provoke, that is to irritate or embitter, if you will, their children. 
it specifically addresses fathers because they have the greater responsibility and, and also the greater tendency to be harsh. But the principle applies to both parents. Clearly, this verse rules out all physical or emotional abuse. It rules mm -hmm. out all physical and emotional abuse. If parents discipline their children too stringently, they may discourage or dishearten, you know, or even worse, praise God. In such cases, children are ultimately turned against their parents or their parents' faith. In such cases, children may ultimately turn against their parents or their parents' faith, praise God. You know, if, if, if we are treating them, amen, praise God, in a way that we shouldn't, and we expect them, amen, praise God, to receive what we got to say about salvation, amen. Amen. They may look, they may look at it in the sense, well, if it, look, if, it, if it allows you to do what you do. Mm-hmm. To me, the way you're doing it, then I, 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 I don't think this is, praise God, amen. Amen. Praise amen. So in such cases, again, you know, it could ultimately turn them against, amen. Praise God, even, amen. Uh, the parents' faith, and I, and I'll be honest with you, praise God, amen. If this is what is going on, I question the parents' faith, praise the Lord, to begin amen. with, amen. Proper training of a child involves both discipline and encouragement. Let me say that again. Proper training of a child involves both discipline and encouragement. Amen. Sometimes we get one, but not necessarily the other. Mm -hmm. Praise God. But that, that, that you, you, you know, if the only time you interact with your child is when you got to discipline them, that's not good. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And, you know, Amen. we talked about this a few weeks ago about words and how words can be damaging. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. To a child. And, you know, I can, I, I myself can talk about it firsthand. Praise God. And, and it can take you to places you really don't want to go. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. It can cut in, in, in a sense to me, amen, sometimes even deeper than a knife can. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. Those there are those things sometimes that stay with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not just simply, amen. Praise God for months, even for years, and even for even in some cases, amen, for the remainder of one's life. Praise God. And sometimes, if it had not just simply been for the grace of God or his enabling power, amen, to get us through these things, amen. Praise God. We would find ourselves being stuck right in this. Praise God. Amen. When you look at the number of people, amen, praise God, not just simply in parent parental relationships with children and things of this nature, but how many people have just lost, amen, praise God, or just left the church, if you will, because of words, praise God, because of what someone said, praise God, amen. amen. I, I can't tell you the number of times that I hear statement, I used to be in one of those type of churches. Praise God. Amen. But, you know, you have to ask the question, but what happened? Praise God. Amen. And my point is, I've seen this up close and personal. I've seen it firsthand, what damage these things can do if we're not mm -hmm. careful. And so I caution us, be careful what, what you say and how you say it. Praise God. Amen. Souls are at stake. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And so we, and, 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 and one of the things that I, I like about God, if, if we are, uh, again, here, 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 here we go again, back to three and 17. If we're, if we, amen, if, if that, amen, becomes, amen, the ruling thought in our lives is how we communicate with people. Amen. Praise God. Then, Amen. We 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 will amen be careful and cautious as to what we say and how we say it. Praise God. Amen. 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 I, I say this, 
amen, praise God, in particular to preachers. Sometimes we think, amen, because we're behind a, a platform, a, a podium, praise God, or a pulpit, if you will, amen, it gives us the right to say anything we want, how we want, Lord. to whom we want, Lord. praise God, amen. We, we can cause so much damage in five minutes, Thank praise God. So, so again, we have to be careful with what we say and how we say it, praise God. And the reality of it is, is this, praise the Lord, if, if, the, if we ain't being led by God, amen, oh, praise man. God. If we're giving truly the testimony of God, amen, glory to God, we, amen, we, we will find ourselves, amen, praise God, doing things in a way that is pleasing to him. What is at stake? Souls are at stake. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And we have to keep this in mind. Praise God. Hallelujah. If we're not careful, amen, we'll find ourselves getting in trouble with God. I, 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 I submit as an example, praise God, Moses himself, when the Lord instructed Moses in what to tell the people, but his feelings got in the way. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we see what happened. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. And this is what can happen yeah. sometimes when we allow our feelings to get the best of us. Praise God. Amen. Mm -hmm. and so we have to keep that in mind. Praise the Lord. We're not up there to preach feelings. Praise God. All right. Amen. Amen. But, to, but to deliver what God has given us. Amen. For his people. Because God alone, only he alone knows what we need, saints. Praise God. I, I I don't know. I don't think any other, amen, preacher, pastor, teacher, amen, knows without God revealing him, amen, praise God, what he, uh, amen, wants for us to say. And a lot of times, one of the things that I've come to understand, I don't need to know. All I need to do is do, get, deliver what he has, amen, given me to say, praise God. As we mentioned the other day, I'm just like a, a mailman, praise God. I'm delivering the message. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. I don't necessarily know what's in the letter. Praise God. Hallelujah. And a lot of times, amen, praise God, when the word comes forth, amen, you know exactly, amen, what, what the Lord is saying to you. Praise God. I know amen. exactly what the Lord is saying to me. Praise God. Amen. Amen. It, it, it amazes me how the Lord can take one scripture one verse and mm -hmm. deal with our diverse issues at the same time amen hallelujah and, okay. and and it's only because it is the word of god god himself amen praise god that amen. these things are able to be performed praise god amen hallelujah amen. We can speak amen intimately to our very knees with one verse praise god hallelujah dealing with each in every one of us, praise God, amen, in the fashion that he would, amen, praise God, amen, have it to go forth, praise God, amen, the scripture amen. tells us, amen, that his word <coughs> will not return unto him void, praise God, but how many know, amen, it will accomplish, hallelujah, amen, yes, it will, hallelujah. Praise God. It, it does not go out and then return unto him empty, not accomplishing, amen, praise God, what he intended it, amen, to do, praise God. But it will, praise amen. God. And I thank amen. God, amen, for that. I thank God, amen, for doing what he amen. does, praise God. Praise the Lord. And so, amen, again, getting back to our text, praise God, again, proper training of a child involves both discipline and encouragement. And I, I want to add to that and time. Time, saints. Yes. Proper training requires time. Yes. And I know yes. for many of us that, that that may be a challenge, but you can't substitute time spent with children. Praise God. Amen. Praise the amen. Lord. Your child, amen, when you think about it, spends more time with others than they do with you. Praise God. Then that mm -hmm. means somebody else has more influence over your child than you do. Praise God. Amen. And I'm not saying, amen, praise God, it's intentional influence, but that becomes the reality. If they're around somebody else more than they're around you, then, you know, you got to think about, well, who, 
who's who they're being influenced by. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And I will also tell this, particularly to our young parents, be, be parents. Praise God. Right. Raise your children. Stop, stop, stop leaving them with everybody. Amen. Praise God. Amen. No, oh, they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're saints of God. I, take care. <laughs> Let me stop. Praise God. Amen. 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 But my point, raise your children. <laughs> Amen. Don't be That's too right. quick to leave your children over someone else's house. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise yeah. the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can we thank say you thank you, Lord? Thank I, you, I, Lord. I, I, I'm not going to go to verse 22. Servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with the eye service and men pleasers. We'll begin with that. Amen. In our, our, our next class. But again, saints, amen. Praise God. These things, amen, as it relates to the family, amen. Praise God. Again, there has to be, amen. You can't get around time. And I, I, I'm one of those that um, um, spent a lot of time away from my family. Uh, and it wasn't really until, praise God, that. Um, I became pastor here that I got to spend a little, a lot more time with my, my, my children, praise God. So, you know, as a result of that, there are times when we're having family, you know, just co general conversation. There's so many things I missed out on. And so I say what I, I say this because I say it because of personal experience, praise God. Amen. That you, you, those formative years, you want to be there. Praise God. Amen. You don't want to come in at the 11th hour. Praise God. And the child is asking, who are you? Praise God. Amen. Amen. But you want to be there. Praise God. Amen. And so this is, these are the things, amen, that we, that, that we, we, we want to, amen, get across. And these are the things that you need to know, particularly those that are, you know, uh, planning on getting married, thinking about getting married, thinking about having their families and things of this nature. It requires a lot of your attention, a lot of time, praise God. It requires, amen, praise God, a complete commitment, amen. amen. Not just simply, you know, from a, from a husband's perspective, oh, my wife's going to take care of the home, the family. It requires both amen. of you there, praise God. Amen. Not amen. one of you, both of you, amen. praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so when we look at it from the perspective, amen, praise God, that we see in scripture, amen, as he says here, amen, praise God, there is, again, there is a lot of activity there, but it requires, amen, praise God, that time. It requires, amen, praise, and see, the other side of it is when you don't have time, you tend to deal with things short-sighted, praise God. What do amen. I mean by that? Situations come up, you don't really consider them you don't really contemplate before you speak amen because in your mind i got I'm, i got i'm busy i got other things i need to be doing praise god amen. hallelujah but you can't handle these things amen praise god amen with that attitude praise the lord i remember amen. once I, I i saw something and i wanted to deal with it right then and there and the lord just said don't praise god so i left because I, I was on my way out and I came back and when I came back I was better able to handle it in a much you know better way than yeah. I, if I would have handled it in that moment praise God praise the Lord yeah. Yeah. but if we're so busy that you know we don't have time amen praise God to even consider the whole of what we're dealing with then we're going to make some terrible decisions praise God Amen. Amen. Praise God. These are our children. The Lord has blessed us with. Praise God. Yes. And we are to do amen. all that we can. Amen. Praise oh, God. That not only, amen, praise God. Pray, amen. Not only that they will, amen, be, amen, uh, go on to receive the spirit of God, amen, in their lives and be faithful unto him. Amen. But they will also be, amen, praise God, successful in life. In all amen. the yes. Praise God. Amen. Amen. In my mind, amen, we're responsible for, amen, putting those things, giving our children those things that will make them be successful in life, praise God. Hallelujah. 
Amen. 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 That means, if it just simply means teaching your child, amen, praise God, how not to be lazy. Amen. To get up. Amen. Praise God. Amen. amen. I, I'll stop here, but my father used to say almost every morning, amen, get up. It's not your birthday. Get up. It's not your birthday. Get up. It's not your birthday. <laughs> amen. And one day, it, saints, it happened to be my birthday. <laughs> and he said, well, and I said, well, dad, it, it's my birthday. Get up anyway. Praise God. Uh -uh. Amen. <laughs> but that mentality instills something to, into me. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So Amen. much so that when I finally started working, praise God, I, you know, I just worked. People would tell me, you know, managers would tell me and say, well, you, you, you know, you got leave. Take your leave. Yeah, I, but I, I, I just worked. Praise God. Amen. Because that's what was instilled in me. Praise yeah. God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so, praise the Lord. And, and the thing is, amen, this is what we need to do, praise God, instill those proper values, those right values into your children. Praise God. Amen. God bless you, saints. May amen. heaven smile upon you as our prayer. We thank God for you. We hope you got something out of the lesson. Amen. amen. On this morning. Amen. Praise God. Amen. amen. I'm going to turn it over at this time. Amen. I believe to Elder James. Praise God. Amen. Bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bless Lord, everybody. Bless you.